Frederick Miller immigrated to the United States in hopes of starting a brewery. He purchased the old Plank Road Brewery in Milwaukee in 1854, and by 1855 had opened the Miller Brewing Company. For the first several decades, Miller Genuine Draft was available at local bars or by filling pre-growler beer buckets. In 1903, Miller released High Life. Placed in a clear bottle to show off the beverage, it became known as the Champagne of Beers because of its foil top and the bubbly carbonation. But is it worth keeping stocked? Find out now on Two Dudes Reviews. What up guys, yeah, today we have the Miller High Life, and yes, I have the glorious jumbo 32 ounce, one quart of beer size. So let's just get cracking into this. Most of my regular drinking glasses are dirty, so I'm going to be using this little uh, Brooklyn Brewery bad boy. Anyways, I got a buddy. This is his drink of choice, and it's not Miller High Life. It's what are you doing? So let's get this a pouring. Of course, with that said, my buddy having this as his favorite drink, I can't tell you when I last had one of these. No. They do always look kind of nice when you get it in a glass like this. Of course, the little gold rim always adds just a little touch of class. So you can't go wrong with that. Of course, it looks, of course, we're not writing it on looks. It kind of reminds me of a, a light ginger ale almost with the carbonation going up. And if you lucky folks that's had Verner's before, this is kind of what it looks like. And if you haven't had Verner's before, you're totally missing out. And see if they have it in your uh, local grocery store. But best ginger ale, not even, not even close. But all right, let us get into the smell. Yup, that, it's got your, doesn't smell too bad. It's got that little like lemon, Rhine going on, some wheat. I mean, with these kinds of beers, you can really smell the grains where you got the uh, the rice and the corn. You can really smell those aromas. I mean, you. It, it is what it is. It's got just that lemon rind with corn and wheat, basically. Doesn't smell too bad. As it's got enough citrusy in it where it's like, okay, maybe it's it'll be good for, you know, the temperature outside. It is like in the low 90s right now. So this premium brewed Miller High Life, the champagne of beers, doesn't smell terrible. So, I'll, yeah, sure, I'll recommend it on the aroma. But all right, let's get into the taste. This is definitely one of those beers where it's important for it to be really cold. Whenever you're at like a little a tourist town, you'll, there will always be a bar that says the coldest beer in town. You you need it to be the coldest beer in town was one of these things. Where it's so cold, it just has crisp, it just tastes crisp, and it's got that, you know, enough of that lemon zest going on where it's like, okay, this is, ref this is decently refreshing. Once it starts to get close to the room temperature, you're kind of screwed. But... This thing has been sitting in the back of the refrigerator getting nice and chilled for long enough, so it doesn't taste terrible when it's this cold. Most of the taste is front is at the front end. Get a little bit of the barley bit of that lemon rind, more of the corn and rice kind of flavor. 
and all that really it's the tip of your tongue when you're sipping it it's right there as it washes back it loses the majority of its flavor it's kind of the, the the super cheap beers that you drank in college, you know, like the, the Keystone Light, or not even the lights, the Keystones and then the Bush and that stuff. You remember pretty much for the rest of your life the, those kinds of cheap beers that you drank in college. This is like the next evolutionary step in your beer drinking. Um, it's just like how you would go. You go that super cheap stuff because you can, that's what you can afford. You take a little, the next step up to a High Life or a Budweiser kind of thing, where there is enough of a step where like, okay, this tastes not as skunky. And then you, if you, you can either hang out on that step or keep going. But this, it doesn't have that skunky th thing to it, which is fine. And it doesn't, yeah, it, it doesn't taste terrible, honestly. Whenever I well one, whenever I see a, a thing like this, I'm always like, "Oh man, this is gonna be bad." But to be fair, to com to completely review it and only against the other jumbo, mass-produced standard beers like this, this doesn't taste that bad. So I will keeping that in mind. You know, I, I'll always take a micro over this kind of thing, but. Keeping that in mind against the other stuff, I will recommend it on the taste, you know, in this specific macro beer category. So the taste is fine for that, as long as it's cold. Yeah, as long as it's cold. And basically, I'm not doing that because it doesn't have, it doesn't taste skunky. There's so many of them just kind of disqualify themselves once they get that skunky thing. And, and who knows, maybe just in being in this slender, very fancy Brooklyn Brewery glass, it's helping out. But I don't know. It tastes good to me for that, so I will recommend it. I taste. All right, next is drinkability, and yeah, I mean my <laughs> my friend, he'll drink, he'll get the six pack or twelve pack, whatever of the twelve ounce bottles, and he will torpedo them. Which is basically, if you you know, I'm sure most of you know what that is. If you don't, it is you're bas you're shotgunning a bottle. But instead of you know cracking the extra hole in it, you put a straw in the in the top and then drink it. And that just lets you go. And this dude will be a he will just crush a, a six pack in under a minute if he if we kind of you know nudge him in the right direction. But um, I skipped over it. The category, but yeah, uh, value for I skipped over value for price. Let's go back value for price. Hold on, that story. It's I mean. Now this is kind of, you're not gonna get too much lower without going into the super just cheapy, nasty beer. So yeah, I'll recommend that value for price. Next category is distinction, how distinct is it? And I mean, yeah, there are people that, they can tell the difference between Miller High Life, Miller Genuine Draft, Budweiser, that stuff. They can tell the difference between those two, but it's negligible. It's kind of like Coke and Pepsi. Yeah, there's a little difference, but they're both general colas. And so, yeah, I'm not going to recommend it on distinction. There's really not a whole lot that's different. And yeah, I'm sure there'll be people that get upset with me saying that. But for the most part, it's basically the same. All right. Now we're on to drinkability, and yes, as long as it's cold, you will have no problem with it. Once it gets to room temperature, you're in a bit of a pickle. That's always, like, I this is one of those beers where like, if you want to get a 116 ounce glass, it's fine, but when, once you start getting the pictures of it, by the time you're into that bottom third of that pitcher, it's room temperature, it's almost it's getting to that piss warm kind of thing, and then it just... It, you guys drink it cold. So as long as it is cold, right out of the cooler, good to go. So yeah, I'll recommend it on drinkability. Last category is would I buy it again? And I mean, not really. This isn't the kind of beer that I, I would keep on on hand. If I'm going to the beach and I need, you know, something, I, I would probably go for something a little different. I'd probably go, I don't know, for a wheat beer or something along those lines, a lighter wheat beer. But, I mean, you know, it is what it is. You kind of know what you're getting into when you go for something like this. 
Again, it's not skunky, at least this one. And I was totally anticipating the skunkiness with the uber clear glass bottle and for how long it's been sitting in my refrigerator. <laughs> so, going on them for not, not being skunky. Just seeing if there's a born on date or... I don't know. They always put these born on dates at the, like, the weirdest positions. But, all right, that is my review. Uh, if, you'd, if you've had Miller Highlight before, let me know in the comments. If you could like and subscribe, it'd be fantastic. Also, check out the website, two dudes in a six pack .com. That's up. We've got uh, the, you know, the podcast. You can subscribe to that, two dudes in a six pack. You can check it out on the website. You can go to iTunes, whatever. There's also a different blog of just different topics. I cover different beer topics and just general stuff on the blog as well. So feel free to check that out. If, you get, if you're interested, I got a book out on Amazon. You can get it also on um, Barnes & Noble's website. It's called Trail for the Soul. Even if you don't have one, feel free to check it out. Leave a glowing review. It would be fantastic. But, yeah, that is the, re the review. And also, before I forget, I forgot to mention these the last couple times. Boxing Day, end of the year, Christmas, I mean the day after Christmas, December 26th, we're going to try to turn that into the next great drinking holiday and wherever you're at. So mark a calendar, we're going to have to do something for it, I guess. But anyways, that is a review, so for myself and for Miller High Life, take it easy.